is a Howard TV original production. On this episode, he breaks stories, he raps, he fights, he is Lieberman at large. 6.18 a.m., what's going on? This is the shit, that's it. I stand by my words, you're a shit reporter. Fucking cock. What's your problem? Testing, one, two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey-oh, yeah. My career has been centered almost exclusively around investigative reporting and crime reporting. I spent a number of years in different local television markets, and I spent seven years as a national correspondent for the program America's Most Wanted uh, on primetime on Fox. Steve Langford left. They needed a new guy. Tim sat with the news director, Brad Driver. They came up with a list of names. They, they, they knew this John Lieberman. I initially applied for the anchor job at Howard 100 News to fill in for when Ralph Howard was leaving to get a new lung. We interviewed uh, John Lieberman twice. Uh, he came in for uh, a, a, an initial position that was open, and we didn't hire him. We passed over him. And uh, the second time around, we hired him. I get a call from Brad out of the blue, and Brad says, our investigative reporter, Steve Langford, is leaving. What is your availability like? And would you like to come and try out for the position? I love Langford. Always thought he did a great job. Homeless high pitch for the holidays. Eric apparently thrown out of his late mother's apartment, allegedly by his own sister and brother-in-law, just as near nuclear winter gripped New York right before Christmas. When one reporter leaves, I'm like devastated. How can they leave us? But then, what a pleasant surprise. We got a guy like John Lieberman, who absolutely fits into the family. I love Langford. But, you know, Langford was like, you know, hard-nosed reporter. Lieberman's a little softer, but still, you know, he's up there. He'll get, he'll get in your face. John Lieberman is out here if you want to meet him. Do you want to meet him? Sure. The biggest wow moment for me was the first day in studio with Howard. John, were you in Iraq covering the war and all that? Yeah, I was in Iraq in 2004. Right. Cover, covered the war over there. Right. Uh, been going after bad guys, murderers and rapists for the past seven years at America's Most Wanted. They sent me all your stuff. So I've been listening to it. I called Tim the other day and I said, this is, and I sent a note to Brad Driver. I go, this guy sounds really good. If you want my vote, I think he's good. Mm -hmm. The first part of the interview was great. We talked about my past and things like that. Then it kind of veered off into my personal life. Are you single? I am dating somebody right now. I'm divorced. How long were you with that wife? Five years with that wife. Oh, five years, and how long did you date her? Uh, we dated for two years before that. Seven years? You were faithful? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, no kidding. You get tons of pussy, huh? Past. Oh, you cheated. <laughs> Walking out of there, you're like, wow, did I just say all of that? Howard makes you feel so comfortable in the studio that, you know, you just start talking. We have a culture here of, uh, you know, the Howard Stern Show that's unique, and, and uh, John gets it. It took John Lieberman about a week to adapt, and once he did, he really took the ball and ran with it. I gotta get Garrett. Hold on. Uh-oh. He's on fire. Mayday, mayday. Art Collins reached out to you uh, this morning, and I believe he called you a thin-skinned horse-tooth jackass. I understand we might see you in a bikini as well. <laughs> I didn't know about that part. John has like a really distinct way of talking, and I think it, uh, I think it sets him apart in the air, and I think it, I think it, it's just fun to listen to. The reason that Sal is wearing caps to work is because his hair cannot be exposed to light anymore. We are reporting, but we are reporting for the most part on funny and humorous things and funny and humorous people. And so it was a different type of reporting for me. But what I decided to do very much, I believe, like my predecessor decided to do, I decided to keep my America's Most Wanted style and just apply it to the characters here. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no, it's, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Elisa Jordana is Miss Howard TV for the coming month. Your reaction? <laughs> would you, you say you're just as angry as you in general? Yeah. Yes. You want to be bored? Everyone want to turn off the radio? Yeah.
Lieberman did an amazing job stepping into Langford's shoes, and uh, he did a fine job of just kind of stepping into it and, uh, you know, shitting on his coworkers. <laughs> What would you say to the people that might be concerned that you would be boring on a one-hour show? That's why there will be a co-host. <laughs> when I was standing in my shower imagining the Howard 100 News when I came up with that idea, and I heard it in my head, John's the type of guy I heard doing the news. I'm John Lieberman, and these are the latest headlines from the Howard 100 Newsroom. We're here with serious news, and uh, he, he hits the mark for me. Uh, I don't got anything why. Oh, why are you guilty? Why you look guilty? You're getting out there, aren't you, huh? Trying to be the dog like fucking my man. My man Langford, huh? And hey, you're doing good, man. You're doing good. I'm gonna give you props. We get stories in a variety of ways. Probably the biggest way around here is to listen. Listen to what people are talking about behind the scenes. You know, it's like the uh, New York subway motto. If you see something, say something. Uh, I certainly apply that to all the shit that goes on around here. Without us, Lieberman would be lost. There's still a booger on the wall from a year ago. Where? Over a year ago. Yeah, yeah I'll show you. It's petrified. Who's done a story on it? Nobody. We investigated it the one day. What? Yeah. No. No. Where is it? Come show me here. What is that? And that's, that's a booger, man. That's, that's, a, that's an antique booger, actually. I'll do whatever it takes to get a story. In my career, I've gone to Iraq to cover the war, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, to cover the situation with detainees there. I've been in London looking for one of America's most wanted fugitives. I don't have a problem getting dirty, rolling up my sleeves, and again, I simply applied those skills to this place. We think someone shit on the floor of the bathroom. Oh. What? What? Look at the bowl, Rob, and if you can see that, not only oh did they shit on the floor, God. pan up. They shit all over the bowl. Oh, oh. oh, my God. If it means putting on gloves and swabbing for feces during shitgate, that's what needs to be done. John Lieberman just said that he would go in and swab. With, with a cute, yeah, I will do it with a cute tip, right. but that area is being compromised, so I gotta get to it right now. <laughs> right, 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 before it's, it's contaminated. So let me get a cute tip. Boy, he's, he's some reporter. I tell you. How many guys do you know will go in and swab shit and examine urine? And you know, He'll do whatever needs to be done. This is all wet. This is the shit. That's it. Right there. That's the swab. That's the good swab right there. That's the thing. That's the wet shit. John was just doing his job, and he was doing, he, and he does too good a job sometimes. Hey, Lieberman. What does Lieber mean in German? You know? I think lover. Lover. I think lover. Lover, man. I like that. Benji is the most difficult subject that I've ever dealt with on any level during any of my jobs. The problem is, you can ask Benji what his name is, and he will not give you a straight answer. It'll be a long-winded, disjointed, uncomfortable diatribe about something and you walk away and you have less information than you had before you went into the interview. Do you feel bad about your actions? What? You were hungry? That's all you have to say? What do you say to Gary who was not happy that six had to be thrown away? Thank you, Benji. I won't give a black and white answer when I don't 100% feel yes or no. I will, I will go, I will explore the gray. Do you foresee a time when you'll damage the cupcakes in the future? No. You're pretty much done with that. No, I've never done that. Well, immediately it was brought to my attention that there were sweets missing from Cupcake Wednesday. And immediately, through interviews and through other surveillance techniques, uh, we found out that Benji Bronk was the main suspect in Cupcake Gate. But I would like to show you on one how I did it. And I think I did it in a, in a safe, uh, show me. hygienic way. There was a one like this, and again, five hours later in the day. But that doesn't matter, because here's the point. Here's did the point. not touch it at here's all. Here's the point. But when I walk by, I don't know who did what. This one, he only took one topping off, but you see there's three remaining. Yes, see, there are three remaining. So this is not an exact replication of what happened. No, I never thought that I'd be doing investigations on cupcakes. It is 
virtually impossible to break through the Benji vortex. But I tried, and I will continue to try. Lisa has unfollowed you on Twitter. Oh, really? Do you follow her? I think, yeah, I do. I'm pretty sure, unless... I, I actively followed her. I think so. I don't know. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure. I don't know if she unfollowed. Can she unfollow me unfollowing her? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. If it, can she turn off that? I don't know. The only hope to break through the Benji vortex is to catch him when he runs through that glass door at 5.59.30 in the morning, eagerly struggling to make it into the studio on time. It's one thing to hear it from somebody else. Benji walked in at this time. Benji was 30 seconds late. It's not good enough. You need to be there. The idea that someone would stand there and watch is Benji on time because he's following a story, that's what you, that's real. That's real news. 6.18 a.m., what's going on? Um, I can't see. What do you mean you can't see? You don't have your contacts in? Did you oversleep? I don't have a contact. What does that mean? I'm hard to see when I have contacts in. What time do you expect Benji to be here? I expect Benji to be here before Howard flips the switch to go live on the air. He treated Benji being late like, you know, North Korea had bombs, and he was going to break that story wide open. Any reason particularly that this morning you cut it that close? I, it's, you know, important to get here before the show, not after. So, so lesson learned. Exactly. It's harder to get a sound bite from Benji than a Guantanamo <laughs> Bay detainee. What time did Maybe he Maybe we need to waterboard his fat ass. When I was late, it was a legitimate news story. There's nothing wrong with it. I was embarrassed about being late, and it was a legitimate news story to cover. Believe him, man, you motherfucker. I've covered a lot of different people in my career, and I think every person that I've covered has sort of trained me for my new existence covering whack packers. Max of Maximum two daily. So how many have you taken in the last 24 hours? I just took one just now. How quickly does it work? It, it, works, it, it, it works quick. I have a special approach to dealing with whackpackers, and it's simply to treat them like people and to realize that this show is their world. What are you going to show me today? Because I really want to see how you live. Well, basically, the... Uh, the day goes like I, I I start out here, get dressed obviously, and um, and then go go to the library. He connects with these people, and it's amazing the stuff that he pulls. How many times did you, Ed's words, jerk off in the phone booth in this bar? <laughs> Once. He doesn't treat it like a joke. He treats that beat like it's the real deal, and that's why I like him. If he treated it any other way, he wouldn't fit in. John's one of those guys that grew on me pretty quickly. He really did. Uh, when I met him, there was just a certain vibe. There are people out there, as soon as you meet them, you get this vibe like, ugh, you know, this, I just, I, I, I sense this, you know, I just, I just sense shit with this person. I sense evilness. John was just the opposite. John just had a certain warmth about him, a certain charisma. What I've been slow to realize and I shouldn't be, but I have been, is that everything around here is documented, whether it's in the building or outside of the building. So if you're at dinners, if you're at weddings, if you're at parties, and you decide to let loose a little bit, it's being documented, and chances are it will end up on the air. John starts to dance, and he's like, you know, he, he's like, uncoordinated and he's not a good dancer but he doesn't care he dances like a fucking mental patient and he goes to the christmas party he dances like elaine at seinfeld his arms are all over the place and he's like hey man i'm just having fun and so are we I would say a couple of examples of some of my antics outside of the building would be getting captured at Richie and Rachel's wedding, 
Uh, speaking of Lisa G's upcoming book in what some might say is a derogatory fashion. Let me tell you about Lisa G's book. <laughs> My girlfriend just hit me on the leg as if to say, don't say your true thoughts. <laughs> I think it's fiction, and fiction means made up. Lisa G, the name sounds familiar. Um, I think she's the one that sits to my left for hours upon hours. I don't think she would say we have a bad relationship, but in all honesty, I am very much annoyed by Lisa G. Reporting live. Photo bombing, John. <laughs> Get out of my shot. <laughs> I would say my relationship with John is strictly professional. I think he's nice. I think he does uh, a very good job. But he likes it his way, and that's the way it is. So I don't bother him. That is true. Hey, listen, you know, every once in a while, Lisa gets under people's skin, you know? She, she does. You know, I've had my things with her, but I still want to fuck her. I don't like when I can't get a straight answer, and I think Lisa is very good at playing the game, and when you ask her questions, she's good at dancing around them. Howard declared you must do interviews with Howard TV and allow no, Howard TV... No, that's not what he said. He said, if I'm using the air to promote an event, then Howard TV needs to be there, and I agree with him. I just heard what he said. I need to just digest all of this. But you're parsing words. You're not. That, that is what he said. That is not what he said. That's not what I heard. Go back there and ask Gary what he said and Doug what he said. I don't hate Lisa. She just evokes strong feelings of disgust in me. I just get disgusted at some of the things she does. And I may be wrong. Maybe it's not a rational response, but it just drives me crazy many of the things she does. It's, you know, it's the odd couple. What can I say? Ball busting is an art form around here because there are very few quote unquote normal conversations. Most of it is ball busting in one way or another, and it starts at 5 o'clock in the morning, and it ends until people go home. I would say Ronald Mund is probably the biggest ball buster on staff. Like the pace likes to get under Kaplan's skin, I like to get under Lieberman's skin. I know how to turn his screws. I blame Ronald for the turbulent relationship that we have. It's because when you walk in in the morning, there are mornings when I just say, hey, what's up, Ronnie? Good morning, Ronnie. And all of a sudden, it's... Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Can you please clarify? No. I'm not clarifying anything. Can you please... No. When do you think you have your voice back? After you suck my dick. What kind of spot is it? He told you what it is. Somebody came on it. Ronnie is hands down the most cranky person you'll ever deal with. And take that crankiness and put 5 a.m. into the mix, and it's unbelievable. I'm cranky, I admit it. Don't fucking bother me then, you prick. Um, here's the question. Well, Lance, ask the question already. Are you sick? No, I'm not sick. Do you get manicures? No, we don't. They say some guys, their cars are their extension of their cocks. Well, I think that microphone is an extension of his cock. What is wrong with you? Are you a psychopath? <laughs> <laughs> Look at your fucking suits. What are you You're using? All to, burnt. What are you using to get this? Don't spot worry out? about it. You're trying to solve shit that's not here. So your travel schedule has you behind on your hygiene. No, it doesn't. Have, no, absolutely not. What kind of fucking thing is that? You know how you know how when you get a girl and. You shake your cock at the face and you're, you're banging on the tongue and the mouth and all that stuff. That's that's the feeling I get. That's what he wants. Leave me alone. Away from me. Anything else? No, nothing else. Good night and have a good day. Yeah, have a nice day. Thank you. Ray. Yeah, kiss my ass. Oh. You, you're not a good reporter. Oh, I'm not? No. I got a list of fucking stories here. It's not good, man. Nice to see you. Nice to hair dye job. It came out good this night. Fuck off. I'm setting the record straight. I do not use just for men. I do not use any hair dye in my hair. 
dry your fucking hair, admit it, and you get your fucking eyebrows waxed. Too, well, I do get my eyebrows done, but I don't bitch. get... Get out of here. Fuck off, dude. He's very fucking vain, that guy. You don't have to like me, but you can say no comment. No I've comment. Had many other people not like me. No comment, and I don't like you. I stand by my words. You're a shit reporter. <laughs> fucking cock. It's all in good fun around here. The best part of my whole life with him, though, with, with, with Lieberman, you know what that is. No, no, no. Please, please, please. Rado challenged me to something getting in the pace car. I did it. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy one moment of it. I was scared for my life and my being and my existence. Oh, ah, ah! Oh, Jesus Christ! He had to know about the pace car. He was fucking investigating and, and breaking my balls about it. Wait, you have a new car. Uh, dude, I'm not going there with that. <laughs> A listener said they saw you in the pace car recently. I really don't care what the listeners say. Leave me alone. Have you taken it out for a spin in the past week? None of your business. Was the top up or the top down? None of your business. And I said, well, if you want to see it, this is how you're going to see it. No! I said, stop, dude! Ah! The unique thing about the Stern Show is that Reporters around here usually become part of the stories as well, like when Lieberman uh, got a low rating on the Ugly app. Joe invented an app that can tell you if you're ugly or not. The app takes measurements off your face. There's like a hundred different points it'll take on your face and uses different ratios. The Ugly Meter was early on in my tenure here at the Howard 100 News team. Hey, put your hands for you. you don't know that he can have you advertising for that block party. John Lieberman? Yeah. Who's an 18. An 18? 18. I could see that. There is no fuck eight fucking no, team. Yeah. No, no. It bothered me, I'll be honest. Getting an 18 bothered me. Everybody in the media, to some degree, is vain, and you don't want to be told that you're ugly. That's bullshit. <laughs> wow. There is no fucking way I'm an 18. It was too tight of a shot. If I had to do it all over again, I would probably temper my emotions a little bit, because the problem around here is once you show weakness, Everybody is out to exploit that weakness. Hey, John, what's on your face? What are all the scratch marks? Oh, yeah, you've no, got No, I was just scratching mark. my forehead yeah. after I found out this. Wow. I was scratching my forehead. I have sensitive skin. But you always can tell when Lieberman is nervous because he scratches his fucking forehead and the side of his face, and he gets. it looks like a cat. He just woke up from fighting with a cat or something. Occasionally, when I tend to get worked up about something, I'll scratch my forehead and uh, like this, and it'll make a red mark. I have very sensitive skin. It'll stay there for a few minutes. It bothered me to the extent that, here's why, here's why it bothered me. Oh, oh my God. Shut the fuck up, I got a lot in my hand. Yeah, he's got a lot in his hand. Here's why it bothered me, like I said on the wrap-up show, because that's gonna stick with, like these guys have been here 25 years. They got, you know, intelligence tests and this test and that test. This is the only test I've been a part of, so this is now gonna stick with me. Why are you worried about it? It's, it's it's idiotic. Yeah, it is idiotic. Why would why would you worry about something like that? You're still talking about it last night? Wow, dude, come on, let it go. I love when John walks in and he's part of our crew and he's analyzing something or suddenly, you know, John's arguing about his ugly meter score or, you know, it's because he, he takes things to heart. He genuinely didn't understand why he was so funny in the rap contest. But he was rapping against Sal. Cool the candy wrapper, I'll unwrap you, and then I'll eat you like a Kit Kat. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's so beautiful about him. He takes it seriously. He really thinks he can rap. He's, he's a guy who throws himself into a situation, and I like that. John Lieberman can't ride a bike, he can't rap, but he can do news, and he's very, very good at it. I like John a lot. I really do. I think he's a fun guy. He's got a good heart. Uh, and he fit in with us almost right away. And that's not easy to do. He breaks my balls. I break his balls. But he, he you know, he, he can take it. And I can take it. Everything is fine. And he's a good guy. And I'll hang out with him anytime. He is a go-to, reliable, old-school reporter. He's great. This has been the behind-the-scenes episode of Lieberman at Large. I'm John Lieberman. What do you got? I got, uh... Nothing around here.
fucking work, so shit, what else is there? Area. Fuck away from me. Here we go, hands up, let's talk shit. Everybody talking shit. Dripping wet shit. This mic is such a piece. We've never heard any sex stories, but we have heard cookie stories and cat pussy stories. Could I please get this yeah, story out before I really have to take action? Oh, ooh. Hold on, I'll be right back. Where'd you take your butt? Say Dude. cheese. When you open it up, it. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Hey, what annoys you most about Lisa G? She reads me in the New York Post every morning. I read newspapers. Uh, Ronnie, somebody open a Twitter in your honor. Yeah, uh, RM Limer. Hold on. on. This is this fucking recorder. So everybody do it. <laughs> Look like you've been through wars on you. They right? just rub their ass and their cocks on me. You started going out in the front. Oh man, my mic died again. Uh, Motherfucker. Right. I'll get you the next break. Alright, no problem. <laughs> this fucking mic is a piece of shit. Woohoo!